What's up, my dear friends of the world? Paul the Trombonist here, and in this video, I'm going to share with you the number one tip I discovered when going about the art of improvising on your instrument and how you can apply it in your life. And by the end of this video, you're going to be like, whoa, it's going to really allow you to have some clarity as far as improvising and how to approach it. So don't go anywhere. We're just gonna get right to it. So if you're new here, my name's Paul the Trombonist. If you've been returning, thanks for returning to my videos. All right, let's get into it. So now I want to present you with a sentence. Now this sentence is just a simple sentence, but it's very powerful. And once you apply this sentence into your life as a musician, you will always be in control. And the way we do this is you always want to have this sentence in mind. You must start your idea on a chord tone and you must end your idea on a chord tone. Now, there are always exceptions to this, but I want you to really internalize that sentence. And I'm going to demonstrate for you in this video what I mean by that. So first I'll explain a little bit what I mean and then I'm gonna go and play along with a recording and I'm gonna share with you exactly what I mean by this concept. So you wanna start your idea on a chord tone and you wanna end your idea on a chord tone. All right, what are chord tones? We need to discover what are chord tones. Some of you may know, some of you don't. Let's talk about it. Chord tones are simply the one, three, five, seven, and sometimes nine of a chord. All of that really means, all that really means is just the first note of the major scale, the third note of the major scale, the fifth note of the major scale, and the seventh note of the major scale. That's what those mean. So if we're talking in major, F, let's be in F right now, it would just be F, A, C, E, and sometimes G. The ninth is just the second up an octave. So if you get confused about the ninth, it's just the second up the octave. So those are the scale degrees that I'm talking about. So if we're in the key of F major, for the sake of this example today, we're just gonna go into the key of F major. So we got a one, three, five, seven, sometimes nine. So the notes would be the first note of that major scale, the third note of that major scale, the fifth note of that major scale, and the seventh note of that major scale, and sometimes the ninth note of the major scale, which is the second up an octave, as you discovered earlier. So those notes are F, A, C, E, sometimes G, all right? The idea here is that when you start improvising, you must start your idea on that chord tone and then whatever the line is, as you finish your musical idea, it's essentially like a sentence, like I'm speaking to you now. Every musical sentence must start on a chord tone and it must end on a chord tone. And everything in the middle is just kind of the flow of the melodic content. And inside there, you're at liberty to do a lot. You don't always have to play inside the key. You can go in and out of it. And I wanna demonstrate this with you. So I'm really just gonna jam out on one chord. So this is F major, the rhythm section is just gonna play that chord over and over and over again. We're never gonna get away from it. And inside this, I'm just going to demonstrate to you what I mean by starting your idea on a chord tone and ending your idea on a chord tone. And then I'm gonna demonstrate what it would sound like if you didn't do that, okay? So as you heard me playing, I was starting my idea on a chord tone as ending my idea on a chord tone. And I was mostly sticking in the key of F major, so the notes in the F major scale. I didn't really go away from that. But it's very powerful once you understand this concept of starting your idea on a chord tone and ending your idea on a chord tone, because you can go out of the key. You can really do whatever you want. Now, obviously, there's going to be a sense of balance. If there's too much of that going on, it's going to make people feel, feel uncomfortable. So you want to have a good sense of consonance and dissonance. That's really what makes music feel good to the listener, is a good balance between tension and release. If there's too much tension, we feel sick. 
Like you can almost throw up. If someone were to just bang out tension over and over again, it would make you physically ill if they put you in a room and listen to that and you couldn't stop. On the other end of the spectrum, if there's too much release and it's just all like, ah, like you're in that kind of um, doctor's office or something, you can fall asleep, right? It's just all like, no tension, it's just all diatonic, which means notes in the major scale and it never veers from that. And a good way to approach melodic content is a good balance between tension and release. That's kind of a side note there, but it's very important no matter what you're doing in music, whether you're improvising or composing. So keep that in mind. Now I'm gonna demonstrate again, and this time I really want to share with you on how I can play outside of the key, but as long as I'm starting my idea on a chord tone and ending on a chord tone, it's all good. It is all good. So let's go on. Now, what you heard on there was there's some going out of the key, right? But because I started my idea on a chord tone, and I ended my idea on a chord tone, it all sounded like complete, concise, musical phrases. And that's the key, it's like speaking a language. It has to have some structure to the musical sentences, just like when you are speaking, there has to be some structure, it just can't be all random, non-concise phrases. We need to make our melodic lines like that. Ideally, first you heard me play very diatonic inside the key, starting and ending on a chord tone. Second, you heard me play a little outside, right? But I'm still starting my idea on a chord tone, ending on a chord tone, and there's a little dissonance in there, right? Ideally, though, you want kind of the Goldilocks principle. Not too much of this, not too much of that, but right in the middle, a good balance. So that's what I'm going to demonstrate for you right now. I'm going to do a good balance between that. And this is ideally how you want to kind of approach your melodic content when you improvise. So that's kind of a balance, guys. So was that helpful? If that was helpful to you, all I ask is for a like, and if you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe so I can give you more value in the future and just turn on those notifications. And for those of you that have not attended my free class, I have a improv program, and I have it dialed in from the beginning process to the very end of improvising, from super basic all the way to super advanced harmonic concepts towards the end. It's basically everything I learned throughout my whole life in improvising, and I've always been fascinated with this subject. I've studied with so many amazing mentors of mine, and I've kind of absorbed my own approach. And I put it together in a course called Magic Music Improvisation. Now, up right now, what we've been doing, we sometimes we close access to this and open it again. And right now we've opened up the very first lesson is for free. So if you haven't seen my first lesson in my music improvisation program, Magic Music Improv, click the link, link right now. So I would click the link if I were you if I haven't seen it because I've been told that this particular training, the first lesson, is a big eye opener. So if you found value in this content, this barely even scratches the surface of what we go in on that presentation. All you gotta do is just put your info in and we'll send it to where you want us to send that free training, okay? So my name's Paul the Trombonist here. I appreciate you guys tremendously. You guys mean the world to me. I don't say it enough how much I value this community. It's always a special place in my heart for the YouTube community because this is where I started my journey online. And I really appreciate you guys tremendously. All right, my friends. So this is Paul the Trombonist. The Bananas, he's, I'm in a new office right now. So the Banana, he's somewhere, I gotta get him back into the video. We gotta unbox him. <laughs> if you don't know what I'm talking about, watch some of my other videos and you'll know exactly what we're talking about. But I appreciate you guys. Paul the Trombonist, wishing you the best. Signing off. Mm -hmm.